Hello everyone, my name is John Dole, right here in Tokyo, Japan, at the moment. We're having some pretty decently heavy rain because we're still in typhoon season, but if you look up here, ah, uh, that's right. I have some cover on this balcony here, so the rain will not stop us. So let's get into this. Very recently, TEPCO filed for safety assessments for reactor 6 and 7 in Niigata Prefecture at the Kashiwa Gaseki Kariwa nuclear power plant in Niigata. Now, TEPCO is finally jumping to the fray with several other power utilities who applied for nuclear restarts a little bit after July following the Abe's nationalist government release of their version of safety standards for nuclear power in, in Japan. So TEPCO has finally joined in on this. Uh, I guess they finally feel confident enough to try it. But there was something else going on prevent, preventing them from jumping in with everybody else back in July. TEPCO was busy putting a lot of pressure on local governments in the area. They tried to um, bend their will and get these plants restarted, these reactors. Now, it says here TEPCO spent more than two months, it was a lot more than two months, trying to get local approval to apply uh, for the nu Nuclear Regulation Authority safety inspections. Now, the Niigata governor, who is Hirohiko Izumida, he sent last Thursday, this past Thursday, finally gave the green light for the utilities plan to try to restart these reactors. Now, I don't know what they gave him, but this situation reminds me of the battle that went on when they were trying to restart the Oi nuclear power plant. We know that's that happened. Uh, Hashimoto, who was at that time, I think, the um, mayor or governor, he switches back between those positions. But he was coming out and saying, hell no, no nukes. I'm not going by this. The people don't want it. He was trying to be a populist there. But Tokyo knew there was something he wanted. Something he wanted more than to stand up for the people and fight nuclear power. What he wanted was the authority to go ahead and attempt to transform Osaka into a greater metropolitan area instead of the um, loose system of uh, townships that make up Osaka. So Tokyo saw that, gave him the green light to do that. And then we saw immediately he turned around and switched. He said, yeah, nuclear power is bad, but we don't have any choice. Yep. So probably something similar happened here if the Niigata governor. But since it, I haven't seen anything politically changing all of a sudden down there from everything I've been able to read, so he hasn't come out and said what he's gotten. So it's either money, some type of corruption, or they straight up just intimidated him. So I can't really tell. You know. But it goes further. If you look into this a little bit more, the Economic and Fiscal, Pol Fiscal Policy Minister for the Japanese Central Government, Mr. Akira uh, Marine said that he welcomed TEPCO's move, uh, stating that it is a good thing for nuclear power safety, for the stable supply of electricity, and for the local economy. Okay, good thing for nuclear power safety. The reason he's saying that, because this would be a nice little test run for them. It won't be a reactor that's under a fault line. It won't be Fukushima. It'll be one of these reactors that actually shut down normally following the massive quake we had on 311. So they're thinking here if they can restart it and there's no problems in the immediate term it's, it's turned on, they can use that as a political leverage to say, look, 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 guys, these anti-nuclear people are actually full of shit. We know what we're doing. See, we turn on reactors and you got them, no problem. Watch for that. Because I guarantee you that's what they're going to try to do if they get past these safety inspections. And I get a feeling they're going to pass these. Now, 
if we look back again to the Oi battle that was going on and what they said uh, when um, that plant passed the, the nuclear safety inspections at that time, uh, I think it was the um, METI, Minister of METI at the time, under the DPJ government, came out and said, well, the reactors are more or less safe, and they have basically passed all safety inspections, which means they didn't at all, and they went ahead and passed it anyways. I imagine something similar will happen as this situation of the battle of nuclear restarts in Uganda go forward. So look forward to the similar pattern of behavior. I don't really think you'll see a big change between the two political parties and how they battle this. All right. So we'll see that in the coming months. See how that works out. All right. Now a little bit of more tidbit of information on this is that this brings up the uh, number to 14 uh, reactors with the NRA safety checks will be carried out. Now that that's a lot. So they got a big number now, 14 reactors. They're going to try to restart. So we got a battle coming up, guys. A big one. And it all depends on organization, planning, and direct action. Now you remember when they restarted the oil nuclear power plant? A fairly large group of people went down there and occupied the main interest of the plant. You saw it on, it was live streaming video. I did a video bringing people's attention to it. Again, they'll watch it and so support those people. It's a three-day marathon is what those occupiers did. They didn't sleep, barely stopped for a bathroom break, or to even eat for three days. All they did was drums, chant, same thing. Don't turn us on. We don't want it. It really was inspiring and exhausting to watch them and heartbreaking. So that is going to have to happen if they get to the point of actual attorneys on. And you know, I can't tell people what to do legally, but I think if we at Niigata and all these rest of these power plants start getting turned back on, everything that's been done before might not have any effect. Listen, I can't tell people what to do legally, but a little more may have to be done as we go forward at this point. Now, one final point. All right. Now, these evaluations are part of uh, TEPCO's overall 10-year restructuring plan authorized by the government last year. Now, TEPCO is projected to move back into the black in physical 2013. By streamlining operations, <laughs> hiking electricity rates, they've already done that, and restarting reactors at the Kashiwazaki Kariwa plant. So this plant restart is a major part of the Japanese government wanting to get TEPCO back in making money again. Now, the reason they care so much is not because of um, protecting infrastructure. It's because the Japanese government owns TEPCO. This is something that people don't really know about. I'm shocked. But yeah, it's true. They bought out the company. I believe it was a year, about a year, after the meltdown started. They bought them out because at first they tried to bail them out, just throw money at them, right? wouldn't work because things were so bad that the company was going through money like water. So... The government's only option was to simply buy the company. And that went on for several months, and TEPCO did not like the idea of it all. But uh, the Japanese government said, no, no, no. You'll bankrupt us if we keep on giving you these huge bailouts of money. So it makes better sense just to nationalize you, uh, fire everybody on the VP board, including the CEO, and put in ja Japanese government bureaucrats in place. So, yeah, they're the same thing, all right? This, you know, so it's more about him trying to protect... Um, Assets owned by the government. Now, if they can't get back in the black, that makes the economic situation here in Japan twice as bad as it already is. You got an economy like Japan, and you have a um, economic situation. Over 200% of the GDP is debt. They can't be taking on all these um, companies. So they took on a big one, which they had no choice. They had to take on TEPCO. And now they're struggling with, and they've got to get TEPCO making money. So you see... 
Money and greed and power, man. Everything that goes on here at this point. Everything that goes on relating to the Japanese government. TEPCO. Nuclear power. We see time and time again. The capitalist class. Don't give a damn. And when people rise up and speak out and try to say something. The elites in power play games and give the runaround and stall things. And have us... <laughs> distracted. These small little issues, these roadblocks they keep putting up in front of us. Now we get through those things, they're making plans like this. Ah, oh, guys, I swear. You know. So, it's estimated that if Reactor 6 and 7 and Yagata are brought back online, TEPCO estimates it could manage to cut fuel costs by 200 billion to 300 billion yen per year. Now, the type of reactors that they're targeting here are advanced boiling water reactors, which is kind of funny. It reminds me of the um, thing that Einstein said one time. Nuclear power, that's one hell of a way to boil water. Yeah, but it is a pretty advanced plant. They're, they're promoting that as well. Because they know the hell and the backlash they're going to get from this. Which they've already started to get from this. Yeah, it's a lot of money from the save. And economically, it would help the economic and debt situation in Japan. But as far as keeping a nice, clean, safe environment, nah. It doesn't, it doesn't help that at all. Now, overall, guys, you can see what's going on here. Time and time again, the, the political class in Japan focuses only on economics, their own self-interest, and, and their own power. Where you have the capitalist class, referring directly to TEPCO, and all the related industries connected to nuclear power. They don't give a damn about profit. Not you, not me, not anyone. So that's what's going on here in Japan. we got TEPCO finally join into the fray to restart nuclear power plants in Japan. Until next time, it's me, of course, Ryan, otherwise known as John Dole, checking out.